Welcome all my brother and sister astronauts. Welcome to Center of Light Radio, Center of Divine Enfoldment and Reinforcement. Radio to ignite the soul and the transformation station. This is my, oh my God, ninth year of being in radio and I love it. I love meeting new people, learning new things from people who walk their talk. Tonight is no different. Tonight we're going to be talking about raising your vibrational frequency with my guest Joanne Kissler. We're going to get to that shortly. Let's get down to some announcements and pay the bills. We're going to pay the bills, y'all. If you're in this room now or in the future, please share this to your wall. We're going to talk about becoming better human beings, basically. By getting into the program of the language of the universe. The universal language is not English. I'm sorry to tell you, it isn't. It's what we're going to be talking about in this show tonight. In this forum, you will see a group of links. One is to share. One is also to donate to Center of Light. This is all done from my heart to keep me going and doing what I do. If I supply you with nourishment, please feed the system. Notify me with Keith Goes Live. In this room somewhere, there's three dots, also known as an ellipsis. I think it's called, if my English is on point. Notify me when Keith Goes Live, that we are always current. Also, you can go to YouTube, hyperlink to YouTube in this form as well. That takes you to my work for nine years, nine years interviewing doctors, scientists, archaeologists, (laughs) astronomers. Best-selling authors, spiritual master teachers, God realized men from India. Yes, I did say that. All that stuff. Go to YouTube. Uh, You can go to youtube.com slash center of light radio, or you can go to YouTube and look up center of light radio. All my archive, all my archive shows are there. Give me some thumbs up. Give me some comments on the interviews you like that tells me more of what you're about. I get more guests. How easy is that? September 21st and 22nd. Powerhouse Victoria Smith started taking over the spiritual expos in Memphis. When I say taking over, I mean that literally. She's going to take over this thing. I've done some intuitive work around it and it's going to be very successful. Four Points Spiritual Expo, September 21st and 22nd by Circle of Chi. That's Circle of Q-I. You can find that on Facebook. It is a holistic life event. She didn't say event. It's a life event. This event brings together those who seek information about alternative health, organic living, and overall well-being. Here, you also get to explore the world of the paranormal and mystical that intrigues so many but are afraid to ask the question, what did I just see, hear, feel? There's going to be tarot readers, CBD, oil people thingies. Love me some of that. Reiki and healing touch practitioners, massage therapists, sound bowl healing. Madra Gale is all over that like it ain't nobody's business. Chakra balancing, art of healing, and even new 
technologies that include the use of essential oils for natural healing, using light and electrical energies to encompass the body. Like and follow at Circle of Chi, that Circle of QI, to stay informed, or you can always contact me. I am a keynote speaker. I am going to be talking about radical transformation right here, right now. It's not about the book you read in the, in the past, and it's not about the books you, or whatever you hope to experience in the future. We're talking about right here and right now. And I, if you're in proximity to where I can reach you and touch you, <laughs> you're mine. <laughs> I am a keynote speaker. Larry Flaxman from the Discovery Channel, Ancient Aliens, is a keynote speaker. Dr. Rita Louise, another powerhouse. She is so gifted, even in fields that she somewhat dabbles in, it would be hard for the experts to keep up. Lynette Marie is going to be talking about preventative, I wouldn't say preventative medicine, but it is preventative medicine. All about organic eating, so forth and so on, and all that, no pun intended, delicious stuff. Center of Light Radio. I'm going to start doing more interviews per week. Definitely two. Likely going to increase it to three. I feel I need to do that. It's a calling. It's a something inside. What is that something inside? How do you know? That's the question everyone is trying to figure out. How do you know when you know? You just know when you know. And if you go, well, I'm not sure, well, then you don't know. <laughs> when you know... You know, Yanava, Center of Light Radio. Going to be right back with my guest, Joanne Kistler. And we're going to be speaking about, hopefully she'll stick around for an hour and a half, raising your vibrational frequency. It's everything I'm into. Dig it. Stick around. Be right back. Some Lavender Soul, my spiritual band, is about to come out with, well, not about to come out. We're going to start recording and writing a new album, all at the same time. Members of the Memphis Symphony Orchestra, these people can play beyond your wildest imagination. I am so excited. Here's some Lavender Soul for you. Enjoy it.
Got to hit that mute button. Been coughing. Welcome back to Center of Light, all my friend. Wednesday night, I have a phenomenal presentation, show, interview with Joanne Kistler. Tonight, we're going to be talking about raising your vibrational frequency. Let me read the bio. And I think she's from Memphis. She'll correct me when we get on the air. Uh, let me look at my software, make sure everything is everything, and everything is everything. Let me tell you a little bit about my guest tonight, Joanne Kistler, raising your vibration of frequency, moving into a heart space of love. Joanne Kistler is an empath who has gone beyond the exploration of herself by fulfilling a master's degree in metaphysics and is nearing completion of her doctorate. Wow. Through her journey of self-exploration, she was guided to expand to others to fulfill her mission in life. Joanne serves this mission as a spiritual life coach, energy healer, and yoga teacher. Joanne resides in Memphis, Tennessee, which is a city whose energy source needs uplifting. Dear Lord, she is so on point. And her work is an effort to make that shift happen. Now, 19 years after her arrival, she says the city has made a huge, huge, has made huge strides to improve the city. Joanne specializes in, I'm thinking it's pronounced Yandi, inner child healing. I love that. The process of Yandi healing, inner child healing, is a one-on-one, -on -one, three-day process to unlock trauma from childhood, bringing together the inner child and adult to bring healing between the two. Her experience. With the Yandi inner child healing led her to find peace with her own inner child and to form her first workshop in my mother's eyes. Along the way, during her studies in metaphysics, she found that healing provides the soul with peace and that every human struggling with understanding of in the inner self. Joanne explains her childhood was difficult and that difficult childhood made her and informed an adult adult who was leaps and bounds ahead of her peers. Her experiences allowed her to understand her spiritual self and her knowledge was gifted to help others struggling with the same. And her list goes on and on and on and on. You can find more about that. I'm going to let Joanne tell you exactly where to find more about her work. Welcome to Center of Light, Joanne Kistler. Hi, thank you. Thank you for having me on. One thing I, w I would like to start off with, I love the, how do you pronounce it? Is it Yanti? It is Yandi. Uh-huh. Yandi. Yes. It immediately launched me to my childhood when I read that because it launched me to a lucid, I wouldn't say dream. Dream automatically implies it uh, launched me to a lucid space within myself many years ago. I had an experience, Joanne that okay. I come to a state of awareness, right? <laughs> and I'm right. standing against some lockers as adolescents do, 14, 15 years old. And I'm standing yeah. against a locker and I'm looking at my younger kid self. Mm -hmm. Excuse me. I, I'm, I'm, I'm all backwards. I'm older 
but I'm looking at my younger kid self leaning against the locker, sitting like this, kind of moping. And I got his attention. I said, Keith, this is me, you, from the future. Everything is going to be all right. Does this set the groundwork for sort of what you do with this inner child healing? Going back in time and kind of bringing them together and saying, you know, this is a shake hands deal. And I got you back and I got you slack. Well, so often, so many of us who have gone through childhood trauma, um, you know, you grow up in a home and they don't necessarily have it together. And that's not pointing the finger or putting blame on anyone. It's just the place they were in you know, none of us get out of this life unscathed. Um, we all have challenges to go through. So when you experience things that are traumatic, either in childhood or adulthood, um, those things create an energy within our body. So, so those things have to be healed. It creates a vibration that we keep manifesting and keep experiencing those things in our mind, body, spirit physical body, our spirit, and, you know, left unattended, you know, it's like cancer. Cancer, if you just leave it unattended, it's going to kill you. And so all of the things that we experience from childhood um, that have affected us has to be healed. So with the program of Yandi, um, that takes you back, um, and there's key questions that I have to ask, um, and I take you in and you start working on those things that affected you. Some things are hidden in your subconscious and you don't even know it. You don't even realize it. So you go back in and you um, address those things uh, from your childhood. And then the other process is dealing with the adult because a lot of times the child and the adult um, don't necessarily work together. Um, most of us don't know that the child is still in there, and many times it's wounded. So um, you work with the adult, and then the rest of the process is, is dealing with the two, getting them to respect and honor one another. Let me ask you this, and I, and I know you're working on your doctorate in metaphysics, so I'm assuming that this is not so far out of your purview of understanding. Um, mm -hmm. This is actually a form of time travel because you are literally going back to a space in time to bring these two together from a present vantage point. Mm -hmm. yes. I know that I've been saying, at least in a, a lot in my most recent presentations when I just do me in the audience, that when you go back to a space in your childhood and you heal something, your future timeline does change because obviously it does because when you heal some part of your wounded past yes right now in your present moment you feel better about it so your timeline has changed until you went back to that past nothing changes right Would you agree because with this you statement? keep manifesting you keep manifesting those same that same vibration those emotions and you don't even know that you're doing it so that's where you sort of taking taking the time to go within to pull out those things that have held you back or has kept you stuck. And, you know, you don't want to stay stuck. You want to move forward. You want things to, you know, like it's like the flow of water. You know, without that flow and that movement of the water, you know, the river or the ocean, you know, doesn't calm us so you've got to have some movement you've got to get that stuff unlocked and and dislodge that energy because everything is energy thoughts feelings emotions everything is energy and until you realize that those things are blocking you you don't move forward and sometimes some people you know just as an example there are people who go through divorce after divorce after divorce and they end up taking their last breath and they don't realize um, you know, why did I keep going through that? Why did I keep attracting the same person in my life? You know, that's not what I wanted. And until you recognize and go in within to um, see why you've done the things you've done and made the choices you've made, you know, until we awaken to a higher state of consciousness or a higher state of vibration, 
you're going to keep experiencing that. And, you know, I know for myself, I, I don't want to do that, you know. Joanne, I, I, again, said differently on my, in my recent presentations. I've been telling my friends, my listening audience, that it's important that you go into a state of internal inquiry. You don't have to yes. know what you're looking for. Your intention will dial in the first thing. I even tell them, if you close your eyes and say, what is the first traumatic memory? See, mine was whatever. I'm not going to go there. But anyway, when you ask, what is my first conscious memory that I need to know about that brought me trauma? Mm -hmm. You don't have to know what you're looking for. It'll show up just like that. And so when you heal it, because there are vibrational frequencies, cobwebs, residual energies hanging on in the unconscious mind. You go, no, I think, Keith, I'm pretty clear. Are you sure about that? Every little trouble, stubbing your toe, to use the word, an idea, but every little trouble, until it is rectified, balanced, righted, and healed, when you get rid of it and done with that stuff, even those simple things that you've been somewhat effort, all that just goes away. There's no more effort. What came to mind when you were talking about... Um, releasing and healing those past wounds was this beautiful story i think it was by the fabulous wayne dyer yes. he said this god bless that man has put me on my knees literally i got off the couch and bawled like a baby many times but he said this story that there's this woman with cancer on a hospital gurney it's done she's passing She's going to die in the next few hours, but she's conscious in this moment. Mm -hmm. And she says in her life review before she expired, mm -hmm. she said that, I think I know why I have cancer. And everyone says around her, please share. She says, I've been angry. What is anger? Anger is that feeling that eats away at the gut. What is cancer? Yes. Cancer eats away at the self. I mean, at, at the body, and anger eats away at the self. But he began to say that when she realized why she had cancer was, she was with a cheating husband for 25 years, and it made her angry. But on her deathbed, she realized the real reason she was with him right. is because she simply loved him. And so all that other stuff was not necessary and caused her early demise. Is this somewhat what you're saying, our thoughts and our feelings, past, present, begin to respond in the body in such a way that it can create a terminal condition? Yes, absolutely. I've always taught my son that the thoughts you think and the words you speak creates the reality of what you experience in your life. And, you know, I can't say that enough. And I hope your listeners are hearing that. Let me say it again. The thoughts you think and the words you speak creates the reality of what you experience in your life. And so what key is here is stand in observance of the things you've experienced in your life without judgment. Because those experiences that showed up in your life showed up as a gift. They didn't show up to tear you down and they didn't show up to make you crazy and they didn't show up to, um, you know, get you off your center. Of course they did. But once you understand the things that happened to you, you know, God, God had you in that situation for a reason. It was to awaken you to a higher state of consciousness. And that's what we all have to do. We have to awaken. Again, so you are you are. Out. Go, I'm so, sorry. Please continue. There's a delay okay. in our conversation. Keep, so please continue. Can go, so that we can go out into the world, and be that beacon of light for humanity, because we are all in the same boat. We are all here to help each other connect the dots of this life, and that means no matter what color you are, no matter what country you come from, no matter what color your skin is. We are all brothers and sisters. Again, I you echo something, or I'm going to echo what you said, which is I always talk about being the observer. Because as long as you're looking 
not at the earth, as long as you're on the earth looking at everything so mundanely and you want to pick it to death because you're micromanaging, you're just looking for shit because you don't know what else to look for and your life is boring and that's all you know, and you're looking for stuff. And so that's kind of like the hidden, unhealed child. You're looking for stuff. But when you pull your perspective back and become the observer, what you so mundanely focused on when you were on the earth, all the squabbling, the trouble in the world. But when you're in a space shuttle, all you see is this blue, beautiful marble floating in space. Mm -hmm. Perspective is everything. Now, when right. you, because you live on earth, honestly, let's be real, we can see, we can even deem it trouble in the world. But when you get deadlocked, steadfast focus on the monkey mind that wants to dictate to you and tell you your life story, you get lost in it. You just simply get lost in it. So I love the idea that you talked about becoming the observer. What's that famous saying we see now on social media that says, when you shift from, oh my God, why is this happening to me, to, oh my God, what is this trying to teach me? The whole thing turns over on its head. Exactly. And you take the power away from that because the more we are in that monkey mind, um, you know, the more it holds us back because it's not real. It's lies that we've told ourselves or lies that have been told to us that has created our belief system. So we kind of have to really start unlearning a lot of things. But here's the thing, Joanne. Most people, most people, an average person who is not of this thought yet feeling spiritual process capacity will say, but you don't understand because what I'm experiencing is very real. I know what you're going to say, but I would rather you divulge it and share it with the audience because you're going to say it in a more feminine way. Mine's a little more punchier. And I would like to hear your take or your echo on why some people would say, you know, I'm planted in this reality as well as you are, but mine is not so peachy. We, I mean, can two people actually look at the same thing and experience two different things? Absolutely. Please share. And that, that is called victim. <laughs> They are addicted to being in victim mode, plain and simple. They're, they want to be a victim. They need a pity party. And, you know, we know all of those kind of people that, you know, no matter what you say, you could say it's black, they're going to say it's orange, you could say it's green, they're going to say it's purple, you know. Um, they let, just, me, let me ask you this, dear, because when... And this wells up inside of me very strong. I don't usually go about these kinds of things, but I think it's important. And I mean this with all tenderness, never to depreciate anyone's sacred experience, any to devalue, what's the word I'm looking at, trivialize. Okay. I understand that people make posts, my so-and-so has a condition. I just found out I have this thing. Mm -hmm. I, and they go into, where are my prayer warriors mode? I understand the love. I understand the calling and the asking for because truly you're in, a, you're in a position at that moment of fright, understandably. Right. Are you of the idea and support the fact that when people say, oh my God, I just went to the doctor today and I found out I had herpes simplex number 20,000 or whatever it may be. Are you of the idea that when you do such a thing, you are in victim mode because this thing happened to me versus what can I do? The fact that you're just declaring this in the first place, what are your thoughts about the prayer warrior mode? Well, some people can take things to an obsessive state. And, you know, I'm all for people asking for prayers um, because I believe very strongly in prayer. Um, it's it, it helps strengthen my faith. Um, but if people if people take that too far and, and and then it moves into victim mode, like, you know, I need you to feel sorry for me. I need to feel important. I need you to recognize I exist. You know, um, would so you would you also say that it does give someone who may be sickly some sort of identity? I don't have much in my life, but God damn it. I got this. Yes. Yeah. I've often said that sometimes when people constantly announce their illness, they want to be 
paid attention, but it often comes at a deadly price. And then also when people keep talking about it over and over and over it again, they keep that in their vibration. And by keeping that in vibration, you're going to stay sick. And they convince other people, masses of people to join them in their belief and it actually exponentiates. Yes. How did this all begin to happen to you, Jillian? I mean, were you always intuitive? Of course. I don't think, I know this. Do I? I, I know that a person is always intuitive and empathic. Now, whether it fully engages or they shut it off, I would think more so empathic is with you from birth. It's not something you work, I mean, I'm sure you can work on your empathy, but I think it's part of who you are at your base. When did this all begin to unfold for you and how and why? Well, <laughs> um, I've had it my whole life. Um, I had a dentist one time tell my mother he swore my bladder was behind my eyes because I cried so much. Um, and I thought that was quite a funny thing to put it that way because it wasn't a funny thing. It was a, a sore subject in my family because when I looked at my family and I looked at me, um, I felt something was wrong and I was made to feel something was wrong with me because I was so highly sensitive. And of course, in my generation, it was not safe to discuss the intuitiveness, the, um, um, the telepathic, the, the empathic, which I didn't even know I had empathic. Um, and so, you know, it's been a long and challenging journey to hold these gifts. And, but at the time when I was young and growing up with them, I didn't feel that they were gifts. Um, so, uh, so, you know, I was told about 12 years ago from a woman that uh, did a reading for me up in New York. And when she told me I was an empath, I was like, okay, well, I know what sympathy is and I know what empathy is, but what is an empath? So I went and I pulled out my computer and I looked it up and um, I literally dropped to my knees in tears because I finally had some answers um, to understand what it is that I held. And um, so I began asking God to reveal to me, you know, he obviously gave me these gifts. So, you know, what do you need me to do with them? And so it's, it's been a journey to, to, to be led to what I'm supposed to do. And a few years ago, um, I was in Mount Shasta, which is a wonderful place. And you for... didn't invite me. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know you then. All right. So, so now we in, know. <laughs> I was in Mount Shasta and, um, I was attending a workshop and, um, I've had, I had an out-of-body experience, and I've had many in my life, but this was extremely profound. So um, I was taken in this out-of-body experience, and I was placed on top of a rock on top of Mount Shasta. And this voice communicated to me and said, do you see that horizon? And I looked over at the horizon and I said, yes, I see the horizon. And the voice said, you are that horizon. And then the voice said to me, do you see that moon? And of course I looked up and I said, yes, I see the moon. And the voice said, you are that moon. And the next thing the voice said was, do you see this mountain? And I looked and I said, yes, I see the mountain. And the voice said, you are this mountain. You are all of these things and so much more. You're perfect just the way you are. I'm telling you, tears were streaming down my face. No parent, no teacher, <laughs> no society had ever said you're perfect just the way you are. I mean, how many of us in this world has ever been told that? I venture to say almost none. So... I realized in that moment that there's more to me and more to this world and more to our society than we've been told. And um, then another profound experience um, that I'll share is, is um, 
I was down in Florida taking a yoga uh, program and I spent an extra night because anytime I do anything kind of woo woo, um, I don't want to get out and drive the car. So <laughs> the next day um, in the morning, I got up at 3 a.m. and got myself ready to leave. And I was out on a road um, in Florida um, driving slow because at 5 a.m. at this point when I'm on the road driving, um, there, you know, that's when the deer start crossing the road. And so I am, of course, the empath and I don't want to hit an animal. So I was driving very slow, dark road, no lights, no, no uh, street lights or road lights. And as I was driving down this road, I get a message from spirit that says um, it's directing me to look in my rearview mirror. And I communicated, I'm afraid, because I don't want to hit a deer. There may be a deer crossing a road, and I don't want to hit it. And so this overwhelming sense of peace came over me from my head to my toe, and I was directed to look in the rearview mirror. And so I looked up and looked in the rearview mirror, and in behind my car was the wings of a phoenix bird. And... Um, Inside the wing was um, pure gold, and the outside of the wing, outlining the wings, was red like it was on fire. And I was being told that I had gone through a transformation and that life as I had known it was never going to be the same. And I said, thank you, bring me more, I'm ready. <laughs> <laughs> and though you did your best attempt to describe those two experiences, those words pale in comparison to what you felt, isn't it? Yeah. I woke up one morning, Jillian, in that stage between sleeping and coming back to the room in that almost hypnagogic state. Mm -hmm. And I heard the most beautiful poetry that on this earth, if I tried to use words to describe it, it, it it's not beautiful. The sun rises, the sun sets. The ocean comes in, the ocean goes out. It sounds like not... But let me tell you, when I was in this experience there was a greater aha that happened. I want to acknowledge a dear friend of mine, brother from many years back. And I would like to get your take on this as well, Joanne. My okay. friend Elwood Colwalt is in the forum and he says, a lot of people I meet, a lot of people I meet think I'm childlike. I don't know what to make of that. Let me tell you what I make of it. You can make of it what you want. Let me tell you what I make of it. I see you as childlike. That is 100% accurate. Don't ever change. What you have in the aspect of yourself that is in the innocence, that childlike nature, people want. That's my take. Joanne? Okay. So, <laughs> so I don't know if he believes in the Bible, but I'm going to quote him from the Bible. You know, there's a scripture that says, um, you cannot come unto God unless you, you know, return as the child, childlike spirit that he sent here on this earth. And so I totally believe in that. That's why we have to shed all of those vibrations that no longer serve us so that we may move in the vibration um, towards that higher state of consciousness that Heavenly Father wants us to be in. So... You tell him just to keep going for it. <laughs> Elwood, Elwood, let me let me share this with you, brother. <laughs> We've all seen the social media post that I don't want to adult today. I'm, I don't want to do any more adulting. You don't want that. Your life is simple. Your consciousness is simple. That is not a slight, bro. That is a light and might in you that I wish things as to why people would label. Not, not label. I say they congratulate you. They're acknowledging you as being in a simplistic place. I'm striving for that more and more every day. Those are my thoughts. Everyone, my name is Keith Anthony Blanchett, also known as Yanava, Center of Light Radio, with my guest, Joanne Kissler, and we're speaking about how to raise your, raising your vibration of frequency. So I think when we get back from commercial break, we're going to be talking about asking the soon-to-be doctorate in metaphysics. I love it. Oh, my God, I love it. Joanne Kistler about how can we all begin to raise our va vibration. And I'm thinking one thing that she would say that we do is we begin 
to breathe. Lavender soul, breathe. Trust that I will guide you in whatever you do. Just remember to breathe and do your very best to live in love. Give in love. Be in love. And love you shall receive.
Hello beautiful friends, Keith Anthony Blanchard here with an amazing product offer. We have been hearing about hemp oil for the last couple of years and its potential. Let me introduce you to my dear friend, Ms. Jackie Atwell. Our oil helps bring your body back to a state of wellness. It is also used as a preventative from illness. It works by bringing the body back to homeostasis and balance. It's a natural, organic, non-GMO, full-spectrum oil. Third-party tested and comes with a certificate of analysis. Post it on our information page. Awesome anti-inflammatory and antioxidant. If you are suffering in silence, give it a try. You have nothing to lose and everything to gain. 60-day empty bottle money-back guaranteed refund. To order, go to www.hempworks.com slash Jackie Atwell. That's www.hempworks.com slash Jackie Atwell. Welcome back to the Center of Light Radio. Before I bring my phenomenal, beautiful guest on, Joanne Kistler, talking about how, raising your vibrational frequency. We're going to be asking her, how do we go about doing that? As many of you know, uh, many of you may know, when I go to the bathroom, <laughs> I announce this often, and I think it's important that I announce it, because not because of the bathroom, because of what happens on the way there. Because we have no thoughts. We just have, we have no agenda. We just go in there to void our bladder or our bodies, whatever. And so we find ourselves very open. This is an actual common, this is actual common knowledge in India. And so I didn't know this, but I asked Swamji, who I don't have a picture of, shame on me, about this. And he said, yes, it's very true. God on earth today. I was just hit with a bolt of light. And I've been knowing this. But people know my work through this gesture, Yanava. Under this screen right now, you see the name Yanava. What is Yanava? Ya is the sound of the heart. It's God. It's your will. Na is the mind reasoning. Intellect, not logic. Na. Va is the backbone. These are three primordial, sacred, universal, eternal seed syllables sacred seed syllables for the expression of the individuality as it comes from the divine ocean of the all from the Godhead, Yanava. I am telling you this because I know for a fact that Center of Light radio, video, Center of Light is going to be a beacon of light in the future, the very, very near future. When I say beacon, not that they're like Joanne, there are not other beacons of light. I'm speaking about this platform that I am so humbled and grateful to be a part of for an expression of my vocation in life to be of service. Swamji Visva Yogi, God Realized Man from India, is going to be coming to Memphis soon, September, mid-September. If you want to experience the feeling... Not that you can't on your own, in your own praying to Jesus, or Buddha, or your great-grandmother who is full of wisdom, it doesn't matter. But if you want to have the opportunity to experience something, grace, how it walks and talks, and it's walking is as if it's gliding on water. Those who have experienced it, him, has drunk from the well of well-being and the wellspring of life. This opportunity is yours. What it would it be like to experience Jesus or your, whatever your favorite deity is? It creates a humility inside that opens this doorway. Buddhist monks live in this posture. Why do they do that? They're not meditating to relax. They're quite relaxed already. They are dropping in on the cosmic dialogue via their humility. What are your thoughts on that, dear lady? Welcome back to Center of Light, Jillian. Thank you. Well, this for me is a state of reverence. It's a state of respect. Period. I was in India last year and had an amazing time and, uh, you know, had some more amazing experiences. And uh, so I know exactly what you're talking about. Have you been? 
I had to unmute. I'm multitasking. I like keeping in touch with my family, my tribe, so they include in like inclusiveness. Right. Yes. Thank you for asking and massaging my soul by that question. This tattoo on my arm, I can't uh -huh. turn my arm that much, All right. is a tattoo of Sathya Sai Baba. He can't, long story short, most people know this experience. Many years ago, early 2000, he came to me in a dream joint. I've read all the works about him. He doesn't write books. People write books about him. And I start feeling his presence in my house. Then I start experiencing him in sleep states of consciousness. And one night he comes to me in a dream, taps me on my knee when I'm unconscious to bring me to a state of consciousness. And he's standing across the river and he's talking to me telepathically. And he says, and so first when I get my wits about me, I'm in this position of reverence. Oh my God, it's God. And he says, Keith, stop. Listen, I said, okay. He says, come to India. I said, I would love to come to India. He says, well, th then do. I said, but how will I do that? I've never done such a thing. I have no money, passport. He goes, Keith, 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 put all this crap aside. Come right. to India. If you came to put your feet on Indian soil to turn around to go home, do this for me. I woke up in the morning, Joe, and going, oh, that was just so delicious and hyper real. I guess I'm going to India from all the books I've read. Two weeks later, I get a phone call from a lady I never met saying, Keith, word got to me. You are wanting to go to India to see a holy man. I said, yes, ma'am. She says, Keith, I'm a flight attendant. I got some companion passes for the year that are about to expire. And I would not like that to happen. Knowing you want to go to India to see a holy man, can I give you a first class round trip ticket? Oh, my gosh. Exactly. <laughs> so I went to fucking India. Three wow. months later, brought a tape recorder and logged everything I experienced using a lots of adjectives, beautiful day, and all, this, all to create this. And I speak about my time in India in present tense so the readers can really feel the energy from me in this book. So my answer to you, long-winded and shameless plug, I went to India and it was just so magical. Why did you go? Where did you go in who did you see? What was so, it about? So I flew into Delhi, and um, and then the next morning flew, because I got in so late, um, then the next morning got up and flew to Rishikesh, which is the yoga capital of the world, and um, went is there. Is that by chance anywhere from Yogananda, since he was the bringer of yoga to the West? Um, I'm sure they have an ashram there that is, um, you know, of the Kriya Yoga, because that's what he was, Kriya Yoga. Um, I didn't get there. I was taking a different program and was also learning some Ayurvedic. And um, and I visited the ashram where the Beatles were back in the 60s. And it's, you you pay and you go and you, you, you tour, but it's not an ashram anymore because of the Maharaja is dead, of course. And um, the the law up there now in that area is, is you can't have an ashram next to an animal reserve and there's a tiger reserve that's next to it. Excuse me, would you, would you repeat that again? There was some audio digital pixelation. The reason you okay. can't is because? The reason you can't, um, you know, haven't had, the reason the ashram is not um, in service is because there's a new law that says you can't have an ashram next to an animal reserve and um, there's a tiger reserve next to it. But the energy on that property where the Beatles were and all of that was just off the charts. It's along the, we say the Ganges River over here, but they call it Ma Ganga over there. And I'm telling you the energy Ma from that river, uh, the energy from that river just pulled me in. It was just a magical And that's river. that's kind of the paradox because the, say that word again the name maganga ma m a a which is ma ganga the manga the maganga river is known to be so full of feces and everything else no but not, people, not, not ex there's, exactly. an, there's another river maybe in another maybe it's the river in another part but oh that, i was thinking of the ganges well that 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 area in rishikesh where where that that section of it is the water is clear. Of course, it's ice cold because it's, you know, I was there in January. 
so the the river was cold, but it is just sort of bluish bluish green wow. and it just it was just magical. And, so my, uh, my thought about the fact that, assuming it was the actual Ganges, is that even as though it's been de deemed and said to be so polluted with feces and God knows what else, how come can all these gazillions of people just bathe in it and no one ever gets sick? It's like the light energy of the worship and the praise and the appreciation of the life water just neutralizes all those things that we would see as toxic. Right. Um, in that section, I didn't see any of that. Um, now we did. I did witness a, a funeral. Uh, someone had passed away, and one of the things that they do is is they um, take the body on a cart that's covered, and family and friends and and whoever's attending, um, they push it down to the river, and then they set set it on fire, and um, and so all the ashes go into the go into the river that's how they dispose of their dead which you know it's burned before it goes in so um you know i did witness that i wasn't you know too happy about that because i'm pretty sensitive to to you know well that's amazing you say that because being so sensitive Sadguru, earthly saint says that when someone is going to be cremated please give them two hours before you do it Yes. Not in the West, this is mostly India, because right. there is enough of the life chi in the body, they will feel that. Right. And so, what I would like to, before we get into informing our listening audience about what we can do to raise our vibrational frequency as to why you've titled it that, to live in the heart. For me, Joanne, many years as you, have been doing this, <sighs> all these things, right? And, and you, you know, we were serious about that. And we are we're still serious about this shit. <clears throat> and we're in that. But I think things are much easier. Doesn't mean your work play load is any less, but there is such an amazing, huge consciousness to support you. And anytime you intend to shift, the awakened ones already help you to shift versus right. what you and I had to go through many years ago, which was <sighs> breathe, breathe, breathe. And now for me, I've done many, a lot of spiritual work, as you and many others. It just requires a simple wanting <sighs> right. to shift. And I'm there. Literally split, I am there. For those newbies, beginners, who or even people are somewhat on their way. How do we begin to raise our vibrational frequency? What are some of your methods, truths, experiences, things that says, this works for me? Mm -hmm. So some of the key things are, um, you know, of course, workshops. But um, the other thing that's key is um, uh, being out in nature. You know, there's something to be said about what God created, and you know, it's very peaceful out in nature. You know, I, I, it probably doesn't look like I do, but I like going camping um, because it's the best sleep in the world. Because you're in a, you're out in nature. You know, you may hear some birds, you might hear some crickets, you might hear, you know, the sounds out in nature, and it's very soothing and it's very calming. For people who experience depression, anxiety, um, and um, just irritability, um, that is the best place to start, is to go out in nature. Having said that, um, meditation is very key. If you can just take, if you can start with 15 minutes a day um, and just keep building yourself up to an hour, you know, you got to take time for yourself. You've got to take those moments to quiet the mind, to center yourself, to ground yourself. You know, if you're grounded, nobody's nobody can kick you off your center. Nobody you, can pull you into their stuff. But you see, Joanne, I have a nine to five job and four kids. I ain't got time for that. You haven't sold me yet. Oh, what are the benefits of? Giving well, yourself that 15 to minutes to time. You've got to get up 15 minutes earlier than your chores and all the things you've got to get done. I mean, isn't your life worth it? Aren't you important? 
that's what I would say to you. You have to care. And it starts with self-love. And I know that's hard to, to sort of process, but if you don't love yourself, how are you going to love anyone else truly? You can say you love them, but unless you really experience that state of bliss, that state of self-love, you truly can't love another human being. It's like, let's take, for instance, well, you're in radio. Okay. So if you remember back when there was AM radio, you know, the time when there was AM radio, think back. It was very fast paced and I can't even talk as fast as some of those DJs talked. Okay. So for me, AM radio represented, the AM represents aggravated mind. Do you want to live your life in that aggravated mind? Then FM, FM radio came along and FM was like very slow and it was, sounded almost like a bedroom voice when the, the uh, DJ was talking to draw you in to that space. So for me, FM means fasting mind. Do you want to live in a conscious state of aggravated mind or do you want to live in a conscious state of a fasting mind? You know, the choice is up to each person who's listening. When you're in that fasting state of mind, you think clearer. Spirit can come through and speak to you because sometimes it's a whisper. And if, you're, if you've got that aggravated mind, you're not going to hear it. You're not going to no. get messages that could be the key to changing and shifting your whole vibration or your whole life and put you on a different path to where your dreams are. I have to stop you right there. So that, well, I, don't, I don't have to. I want to. Okay. I've had many, many guests on my show talking metaphysics. I can see. I can see like Superman. You are connected. You are not. This is not for ratings. This is not to schmooze up Joanne Kistler. I don't know this. In fact, this is the first time I've ever seen her. I see that there is a lightning rod inside of you. You are not just parroting words. I, I want to pick your brain, <laughs> your heart, in a one-on-one -on -one conversation over coffee and lunch, and I'll pay for the lunch. Uh, you leave I'll the tip. You, you the leave lunch. the tip. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but I can see your connectivity. That this is not just a bunch of words. You're coming from this place. I'm envious, not because I don't have it for myself. It's always a blessing and a joy for me to see someone so congruent that it's it's almost a struggle to try to explain it. Congrats. It's it's the light within me. And you know, it's all of our responsibilities to go out each and every day and shine our light. We don't know the shoes that someone else is walking in. That's not for us to judge. We don't know what their circumstance or their situation is. And sometimes just a smile would make a difference. If you look at what's happening in our world today with the amount of people that are struggling with depression and anxiety and are committing suicide, it's such a crime. Because if they had the information if they were taught how to self-love and how to rise above the challenges of this life, they would walk a different path and they wouldn't be thinking about suicide. Are there any more things that you would like to offer up before we go to a commercial break? Joanne, we usually do an hour and a half. I've been announcing you can go to two hours. So in other words, basically have another <laughs> 50 minutes if you're up for that. Okay. Oh, yeah, wonderful. I'm, I'm, I'm game if you are. Oh, hell yeah. Let's jump into the fire. So okay. is it, I tell you what, let's take this commercial break now. Um, and then when we come back, I would like if you have any more models you would like to offer up that where pe people can kind of move into their spiritual walk a little greater, a little picking up speed. There are no shortcuts. There are no shortcuts, everyone. There are no shortcuts. But luckily for you in this energy, there's so much conscious support the only there are shortcuts meaning that you have an umph someone patting you on the back and kicking you in the pants saying the window is open yeah. is that what it feels like to you there is a twenty-six thousand year window open that oh, is yeah. like 
get on a train now because it's moving out of the station, but you still can run fast enough to grab on the caboose. Is that what you feel? Uh, yeah, I've been kicked in the pants quite a bit <laughs> the last year from Spirit to get moved enough to get out there and to share my message and to share what I have to offer and all of um, the life experiences I've had that can reach out and touch someone that will help them. And, you know, that's my plight in life is to help make someone else's life um, a bit easier and so that they go in their vibration and with their flow. And you were right earlier about the breath. That was the next thing I was going to say. That's very key is our breath because you have to really, you know, as children, we, we, we breathed a lot deeper than we as adults breathe. And you really have to practice your breath because it needs to get down on a cellular level to keep us healthy, to keep the blood flowing, to keep that energy pushed up to our brains, to increase the serotonin and really shift our DNA. Well, if we think about it, if God is breath, yeah. God is life, we need breath to live, so they're all synonymous. What is the first thing an infant does? Not only does it inhale, it goes, <gasps> it takes in that life the breath. The breath of life. Breath. Absolutely. Mm, delicious, delicious. Everyone, my name is Keith Anthony Blanchard, Center of Light Radio tonight. I'm having a grand old time. I'm trying to expand my time with Joanne Kistler, speaking about raising your vibrational frequency. What does that mean? That sounds like a bunch of nonsense. Ask someone who is living in a high vibrational state. It's not nonsense. They will help explain it to you and it will make all the sense in the world. And it will become your new currency. And your appreciation value goes up and you can bank on that. It's your currency. See, it's current. There's a current that moves inside of you. Whether you're conscious or not, the river does not slow down for anyone. Are you letting yourself flow downstream with that cosmic current to reap all the benefits because there's nothing upstream you want? Going upstream requires effort, struggle, and strain. And when you finally get upstream only to be eaten by a bear like a salmon, there's nothing you want upstream. Get into the flow. That's all you got. And if life is not moving for you in a way you want, just let go. It's time for a change. Fate 
That's all I've got All I've got In the summertime I won't have no water Oh, the wait It's a little bit harder My Broham and Sistar astronauts, are you ready to launch to inner space? Yanavai here speaking with another amazing product, Dream Leaf. Dream Leaf is a highly effective lucid dreaming supplement that creates the right neural environment for lucid dreaming to occur. It increases dream recall, dream vividness, and promotes high level lucid dreams. It is composed of a red pill and a blue pill. Each pill plays an important role in the process of successful lucid dream induction dream leaf targets and lengthens your natural REM cycle because this is the stage of sleep when lucid dreaming occurs the two parts of this supplement are composed of natural herbs that strengthen the mind the blue pill and the red pill contain five of the most effective lucid dream herbs the blue pill promotes restful deep sleep causes REM rebound effect and elevates dream creativity. The red pill promotes lucid dreams, improves memory, dream recall, and increases dream control. I highly support this product. My ongoing experience with Dream Leaf is absolutely beyond this world. Welcome back to Center of Light, Yanava. Some people know me as Keith Anthony Blanchard. I am going to change my name in the future. Why? Not because it's cliche and hip and cool. Because I have shifted. Like my guest tonight, Joan Kistler, she is living in a shifted state of consciousness. What is that? Joy. Peace. Ease. 
bliss, feelings of ecstasy. And our gig, I'm, I'm speaking for her, but I think she's going to say yes, is to expand those moments through breathing. Something great happens to you. You want to expand it. As soon as it goes down, God is breath, breath is life. You engage and in fact induce consciousness and tension. The experience lasts longer. You have deja vu. Whoa, if you can become present so much so that you remember what I'm offering as a nugget of light, breathe. It lingers. It helps to keep the window open. Breath. Is everything you are in trouble something just kicked you in your pants first thing you do is you go inside and you breathe yourself into oblivion to obliterate what you call said darkness and your answer will simply reveal itself breath is the key breath is the key to everything that is anything breath is life because when you exhale that final breath you're no longer here you may be here but you're there welcome back to center of light dear lady thank you <laughs> I'm in such enjoying this so how can we what or other ways that we can raise our vibrational frequency dear um letting go of the stuff that no longer serves you and and that's that's key you know do you really want to at the end of your life when you are taking that last breath do you want to say i shoulda coulda woulda um you know you don't want to carry this stuff <laughs> with you on the other side i know i don't <laughs> i love it i i think i think that you and i are so collaborative on this that if you want to do anything if there's one, two things that you can do, breathe, and then you're letting go, breathe. So you got breathing and letting go. When you let go, yeah, but you don't understand. No, you don't understand as to why we are here as teachers to divulge to you, share with you our hearts and experience from a state of consciousness that's truly hard, difficult, challenging to put into words. I always say, Joanne, suddenly through the silence, the new world appears you can't describe that to someone so what is in the breathing is that new world would you say so yeah yes you know it's it's hard to explain the experience of bliss unless someone <laughs> has experienced bliss you know, it's a very difficult thing to expl explain bliss but that's why it's so key between the meditation and the breathing to connect, to connect to you, to connect within your heart. There's a reason that when, when a woman is pregnant and she goes to the doctor and the doctor tells her she's pregnant, what is the first thing he listens for? He listens for the heartbeat. That's the center of our being is our heart. And so many people have disconnected from their heart because they've been hurt they've been traumatized, they've experienced um, a childhood where they didn't feel loved, and we've got to shed because as we grow, as we grow up as children or into adult, if that's where the trauma happened, we keep coating that heart with a shield so that by the time you're an adult, that heart is pretty covered. You're not letting anything in. It's like a concrete wall and nobody's going to move. Would you, would you say that can, does relate to obesity? And I will share why. Okay. As we look out into nature, especially the tundra areas, mm -hmm. these earthly beings, sentient beings, whales, bears, seals, and the like, mm -hmm. the reason they create blubber by taking in sustenance through the mouth is because they want to protect the core the core of their being from the harsh 
element. Mm -hmm. So they create this blubber to protect. Well, being the human creature, as above, so below, on forever it will go, God is the naturalness of everything. Mm -hmm. So by default, when we want to protect that emotional core, many people resolve to eating, taking in that sustenance to cover up that sacred, <laughs> vulnerable possibility. Mm -hmm. What are your thoughts about that? That is why there's so much obesity, is because people do not handle their emotions. We've not been taught to handle our emotions. We don't know how. And so, what is some How? People... So let me ask you that. How, how would you suggest people go about handling their emotions that would make them not only obese in the body, but have mind, here we go. I love this idea, it just came to me. Mind fat. How do we trim the mind fat, the monkey-minded fat? What would you suggest? Learning to be mindful, learning to go within, <laughs> learning to get back to the soul of who God meant you to be. So many of us have run away from and don't know who that person is because when you when you when you've been reared in a home that is not your tribe, you used that word earlier. Um, when you've been reared in a home that was not your tribe, but you were sent there to learn the lessons that you needed to learn for your purpose, you get stuck, and so you have to release those things that no longer serve you. And this goes right back to what we talked about earlier that you brought up, which is perception, perspective, pull back. Are you seeing six or are you seeing nine, depending on what side the line you're standing on? But here's a third component that I want to offer up. It's not a six or a nine because that's duality. It's this one or that one. When you pull back far enough, there is no six or nine. In fact, the six and then the nine becomes 15. Mm -hmm. <laughs> because when you deduce them down to six plus nine equals this. So my point is, there's a third component that is never ready, uh, readily available to those who never take the initiative or nor the incentive to just step back for a moment. Because I always say that what you think is happening in the world isn't. And what you think ha is happening in the not happening in the world likely is. So it's not about the this nor the that. It's truly about the other thing. And that other thing to me really is finding yourself that is the wholeness. Mm -hmm. Would you support that or? I do. I do. It's perception. That's all it is, is perception. <laughs> and, you know, we all have to get back to ourselves. When you release those things that no longer serve you and you start peeling away those layers, it's like an onion. You know, the brown skin on the outside of the onion represents not edible. Our, our physical body. We don't eat that. But in the center of that onion is pure white light. That's our soul. And, and so some, somebody from our broken. chat, someone from our chat room, I think it was Sana, she said exactly what you're hitting on. Do we all have a light? And please continue. <laughs> yes, we do. We are. Everything all, about us is it. We isn't all it? have a light. If God created us in his image, wouldn't you guess that he created perfection? It's just we've never been told that. What we experience, we've, we've literally experienced life the wrong way. We have experienced life experiencing everything from the physical body. But let me get back to that onion. Inside the core of that onion is pure white light. That represents our soul. So really, if we walked through life from that soulful place, then whenever those things that happen to us externally from a physical perspective, we just let that just roll off our back. And we just say, okay, I see that, I get that, later. And we'd keep going and living from that soulful place because that's where truth is. That's where truth lies. We talked about meditation 
It is the first brick in the house you want yes. to build. The, no, not the house, the home. The home is your consciousness. Mm -hmm. So meditation is your dialogue to spirit. Your prayer is talking, meditation is listening. Right. So knowing this, and we talked about letting go. How many of you have ever jumped out a perfectly good airplane? With no parachute, expecting to be caught by the grace of your, the net of light. So other than those two, are there anything else that anything else that you would like to offer up that we can do to help us raise our vibrational frequency toward more of the truth of who we are at our essence? Yes. Another key element is journaling. And when I say journaling, it's not just any journaling, not, not like a diary where you are um, sitting there and writing, oh, well, this is how my day went, and oh, somebody yelled at me, and no, that's not the dialogue you need to be writing. So what you want to do is, is you want to start building your self-esteem, because a lot of us have experienced being broken from things that were said to us and done to us. So this is a journal about you. And so you need to journal nice things to yourself, even if you don't believe it. The most powerful time to do that is at night before you go to bed and first thing in the morning before you start your day when it's peaceful and it's quiet and the hustle and bustle of having to rush to work and have to you know, get the kids off to school and all of that. You know, Get up a few minutes earlier and take the time for you. You are important. And you are so important. Nothing happens beyond you. You are the center point of everything that is important. Right. So yeah, when you when you start working on yourself and you start writing nice things to yourself and you're writing it as if it is so. So, you know, you'd write like every day and every way, I, Joanne, put your name in there, am, and then fill in the blank. Fill in what you are. Whether you believe it or not, fill it in. Because what that's going to start doing is, is it's going to start retraining your subconscious mind for you to accept those things of who you really are. Because and, who knows better of who you are than you? <laughs> and not, in, I would like to echo that and add another element. Is okay. One, not only does it retrain your mind, when you have an idea... The importance, as Joanne is saying, is to write it down is because you're taking something that is so subtle in vibration and you're actually manifesting it on this earth via your hand moving as the vessel to where you can physically see it with your eyes. Now it's tangible. Now it's solidified as a physical manifestation of your idea. And so the reason it helps to retrain your mind is when you start seeing these validation things that we go, See, I told you you should write this down. I told you you should write this down. Your conviction, your belief increases, increases, increases. So one valuable thing about writing your I love myself testimony is it actually can takes your ideas from just thought to having it integrate into your being. Would you say so? Yeah. Yes. And that's also um, the way to manifest. If it's a relationship, if it's a new job, um, if it's your dream house, whatever it is that you're trying to manifest um, in your life is, is if you don't set your intention and write it down, how's, in, how's, how's the universe and God supposed to know what you want? What, because it just crossed your mind for a hot second? No. You've got to get very specific and clear about those things that you want in your life or that, better still, you deserve to have in your life. You know, there's a, there's a key scripture that says, ask and you shall receive, seek and you shall find, knock and it shall be opened unto you. Those are true. I'll, and, I'll share, I'll, and most people don't know they're knocking. Even in your unconsciousness, you are knocking on that door because the unconditional wishing tree, we call God, which is not his name at all, says, yes, my child, because it knows you can never hurt yourself. So it says, here's a whole bunch of lack. 
I will give you an abundance of lack if there is such a thing. You want more illness and concern and worry. Here's a whole bunch of that. Our whole life is an ongoing prayer, but it requires our conscious awareness to be the masters of our life, yes? Yes. Well, you know, the thing about lack is, is if you're thinking in lack and you're living your life in lack or, you know, I don't have this, I don't have that. Why am I experiencing this? Oh, woe is me. If that's your inner dialogue, then that's what you're going to get more of. But if you sit down and you date it and you get very specific and clear what it is you want to manifest in your life, you write that part and then you forget about it. I'll share a story with you. So many years ago, I lived in California. And you asked, by the way, in the beginning, where I, if I'm from Memphis. No, I'm not from Memphis. I was born and reared in Savannah, Georgia. But I mm. left and went to California and never looked back. <laughs> anyway, um, I had come out of a horrible relationship or was trying to come out of a horrible relationship. And I did not have very high self-esteem for myself. So I decided to figure out what was within me that had attracted that relationship in my life. Um, so I started working on myself. I started reading every self-help book known to man. I started journaling. I got out a notebook where I could put pages in. And I started writing nice things to myself and doing exactly what I'm sharing with your viewers to do is get very specific and clear about the qualities of that person that I wanted in my life. So I wrote those things down and forgot about it and continued journaling nice things to myself to build my self-esteem. And um, just kept journaling, kept going. I went through a job change um, and um, met a gentleman. Um, and of course, I didn't think I was looking at the time because I was still trying to get the other person out of my life um, that wouldn't leave me alone. And um, back in those days, the restraining orders weren't worth the paper they were written on. And it wasn't until Nicole Simpson died that the um, police department started taking it seriously. So um, I met this gentleman. He asked me out. And I said, well, I'll meet you there because, you know, in L.A., if anybody's ever been to L.A., you just don't know what kind of crazy you might meet. So um, anyway, um, said I told him I'd meet him, meet him at the restaurant. So went, had a lovely dinner. I said, OK, he's going to go back to his life. I'm going to go back to my life. And that was it. Well, he asked me out again. So as the relationship went on, eventually, after four years, we got married. So a couple of years after we were married, Spirit spoke to me and said, um, I want you to go to that journal and I want you to find the page where you wrote those qualities. So I went to the journal and I opened up, I thought, I knew as I was walking to go get the journal, I thought in my mind, uh, it's gonna take me a while to find that page because, you know, it was a, big, a thick notebook. And you might not believe this, but I went to open up the notebook and it opened to the exact page. I do where, believe it. <laughs> where I had written those qualities. I mean, which that blew my mind. I open up the notebook and I start reading the qualities that I had written in that notebook. And I was in a state of shock because exactly what I wrote was exactly what showed up in my life exactly one year to the day that I had written it. So it's very powerful to get specific and clear those things that you want in your life. And meditation helps because when you quiet your mind, those things will come to you that's for your highest and best good for you to write down. I call it explosive clarity. And like you said, you use the words come to you. And I get it. But those things, they don't really come to you. It, it seems like to you that they come to you. They're always there. The truth just sits there patiently waiting for eternity, saying, right. whenever you want to come back, all you have to do is clear the monkey. The monkey wants a banana. God damn it. Give the monkey his banana. Give him a task. So how yes. do I give my monkey a task? Okay, you do this thing you want, 
and as we talked about earlier, you pull back. And what begins to happen is you will see that monkey just sitting there yammering on, yammering on, yammering on. You realize that's not who I am. But it requires that pulled back perspective. I'm having such a great, amazing time with my guest, Joanne Kistler. We're talking about raising your vibration of frequency. We have a couple of more minutes. We're going to take a very small pause. We're going to come back for our final segment. And when we get back, um, actually, let's do this now. Joanne, if you would please give your contact information out to our listening, viewing audience about anything you want them to know and to find more about what you are doing. Okay, so my website is Breath of Energia Healing dot com. That's the website, and email is Breath of Energia Healing at Gmail dot com. And I'm glad you mentioned about um, the uh, Victoria's um, Four Points Expo that's happening at the end of September. You're going to be there, yeah. I am going to be there, and I'm going to teach a class, um, and I'm going to be there doing energy work on people and helping to raise their vibration in their heart and chakras and all of that wonderful stuff to help people to feel better about themselves and their life. I'm excited. You come to my booth, I'll come to yours, and we'll do a trade. <laughs> Let's do it. Let's do it. <laughs> Love it. We got one more segment. Y'all not by here. Keith Anthony Blanchard, Center of Light Radio. Stick around. We got one more segment. We're going to be right back with the closing of the show. Stick around. Everyone needs an angel of love. Come on. Until the end of time, you will never be alone.
Welcome back to Center of Light. Keith Anthony Blanchard here. Yanaba. I want to acknowledge someone in the forum who says, Karen Owen says, I am absolutely, I, I absolutely am true. I am, I, whew, I absolutely am Trudy. I guess I didn't catch the comment above. Thank you so much. Divine Intervention sent me to you to send me here. This has been a great awakening. I am thankful for you, my friend. Everyone, myself, my work, my play, my guest, I seek, eek, freak these people out sincerely and passionately. And I find them to enlighten not only my listening audience, but it is my goal that even though I will claim I know all this stuff. My goal is to forever learn. And I'm trying to find those people who keep me humble. As I said earlier, humility is the highway. It's that which opens you up, and it's also vulnerability, exposing your core. Some people want to cover that core, and they eat. Not only do they eat food, they eat nonsense. And they get fat, obese physically. And they gain a lot of mental, monkey-minded fat. And it chokes the heart because the heart can't, per se, get through the ceiling of the monkey mind. That is why it is so important and beneficial and integral for meditation to help bust open that blockage so you can actually hear the sweet divine whisper of your parents say, and in that profound sea of deafening silence, would you say Joanne is yes. every, everything? Yes. You know, the heart is key. You know, when you, when you have a broken heart, you keep drawing that in from, from people that you meet in society or relationships. And, you know, you got to heal that heart because that's where your love is. And it is the source of everything. It's a key. That's where when you go, when I meditate, I go into my heart. But it's, most people think the heart is this ooey gooey feeling, and I'm in love with John Doe. I just got a new boyfriend. Hey, girl, listen up, and all this. Hey, brother, let me tell you, I just got this fine piece of whatever. You know, I get that. That's that. In fact, I'm not. I don't get that. That's not even love at all. That's lust. It's infatuation. I would rather be with someone, not that I'm in love with. How many people you have been in love with that cause you nothing but pain on the exit? I would rather be someone I'm compatible with because it creates the possibility of longevity. I know your faults. I know your bliss. Let's get in here and make a sandwich and add a little mayonnaise to it. So I, I'm not one for the idea of love being this ooey gooey syrupy molasses kind of feeling. Love is just powerful, right? But it's so subtle. It's beyond might. Would you say so? Yes. You know, it's it's you know you think back of your youth. You know, when you were in love and whatever, and you your head was in the clouds, and you know you were young and you didn't know any better. You know, but that felt like love. You know, because it it. You know, it felt like that's what love is supposed to feel like. But when you don't have anything to compare it to, but that's like an empty love. You know, your head's and it's the head in the clouds. That's not coming from the heart. You know, there's a difference. There's that's two different types of love. And it goes back to letting go because I've been in a, t t a relationship for however many years or however many months, and the other person says, "I'm sorry, I'm just not getting it." And they want to exit. So now you, a person has a tendency to grab on. If you are grabbing, how can I define love? This is speaking from your point of view. To whatever degree you are grabbing on is not love mode. Love. What? So what love truly is, it's falling into a space inside of you that lives the reality as a living testimony that says, you go do what you got to do. Do you need $20 for gas? <laughs> and you let that person go. But you have to get yourself to a place of letting go. What is it I'm letting go of? Everything, like Joanne said, that you were taught that is important, which has no relevance to your life whatsoever. 
It hurts. And it hurts. It's self-induced suffering. And it's a connectedness when you're with someone and it's real love, you know, when it's that heartfelt love, where it's that soulful love, where that person is your soulmate. That person thinks your thoughts. That person, you finish e each other's sentences, you know. Um, when I lived in California and I was dating my husband, so I thought, you know, I'm going to test him. I'm going to see how if he's really <laughs> connected to me. I'm glad it didn't backfire. <laughs> <laughs> no, it didn't. So, right. so went to an art festival. That's another key thing that that you can do to help peel away the layers is. Do some art, whether you can draw, whether you're an artist or not. Just, just do some drawings. Do some, do some artwork. That will help you get you out of yourself. So, went down to this art festival, and there was a wonderful artist. Um, there were several cabinets of of one of the sections where they, um, several artists had made jewelry. So in my mind, I thought, okay, I'm going to go over here. And I looked at these different pieces of jewelry and not that I wanted to buy anything or anything. And I just wanted to test. So I looked and I scanned and I said, okay. So I said to him, I said, you know, there are seven pieces of jewelry that would be my taste if I were going to pick them. So which of those things would I pick? Now the case is pretty full. And would you believe he picked every single one of the items that I had eyeballed that I would have chosen? And I thought, okay, this is a fluke. This can't be. So that I sounds it. like the toku exercise. You know what the toku is, right? No, I don't know what that is. That's, well, it's exactly what the Dalai Lama does. Check this out. It's so beautiful and poetic. And it's, it, what you just explained was beautiful and poetic. In order to inaugurate whatever the right word is, the new Dalai Lama, it, when anyone throughout eternity has ever passed, they lay out bells, glasses, little trinkets that belong to the recent Dalai Lama. Mm -hmm. And when you can pick out every one without mistake, you become that soulmate <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I've I've heard I've heard of that. I just didn't know what that's what it was called. I, th I so. think the word is called toku. Okay. Okay. So then I went to the next case and I scanned it and I might have picked five or six things in that case and I said, "Okay, there's like five or six in this case. Um which would I pick of those?" And he picked every single one. And I thought, "That is bizarre." So when we would go eat at a restaurant, I'd pull out the menu. I'd look at it. Okay, so what am I ordering as an appetizer? He'd tell me what I was ordering as an appetizer. I'd say, okay, what is my main course? He'd tell me what I, my main course was. I kind of think spirit had a hand in all of that because that just... That and just so obviously out. your relationship to this day is reflecting such? Yes. Hence yes. true soulmates have found. Yeah, yes. That's ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, but it's real and it can happen to everyone. You just have to do the work. Many and years I, ago, spirit you're was. You're not only talking about the soulmate idea, you're talking about anything a person has a passion for, which could be a soulmate. It could be a car, it could be a dream house, it could be a certain lifestyle. So that would be all considered soulmate. People consider soulmate. This flesh and body, bone, meets it kind of thing that smiles at you when you wake up in the morning but but this principle applies all across the board yeah right exactly mm. we all have that power within us and just the only reason that some people don't ever get it don't ever achieve it don't ever have it is because they haven't done the work if you're gonna if you're if you want these things to shift in your life you've got to do the work without doing the work on yourself without healing yourself the ebb and flow of that water, it's the movement. If you, if you aren't creating movement in your life, it's not going to go anywhere. The water gets stagnant, it begins to rot. Right. And it creates mold and fungus and, and all those things are not cool. It gets dirty. <laughs> we, we're at the end of the program, dear. We've okay. Three questions are always 
put to my guests as often as I can remember is one, how did you get caught up in this nonsense? Because from the normal point of view, this is nonsense and most people want no part of it. But how did you get caught up in this? One of the first questions is, and so what is your story and your dance? And we did that. So here's the final question. You ready? <laughs> God, Jesus, Buddha, higher source, property, whatever you call it. What is that for through with you? What is that? What is the what? God. What is God to you? How would you describe your experience using adjectives, words? God is the power within my soul, as well as yours and everyone else that walks the face of the earth. And we just have to awaken to that power that's within all of us mm -hmm. and love ourselves as God loves us. You see, what you just said was a mouthful, and it will take your the rest of your life, listening audience, to integrate that and experience it. You have to love yourself. <laughs> I'm going to find this. Please be in my scenes. One moment. This is actually integral. Oh, and here it is. Oh, wait, wait. Give me one moment. It's exactly what you said, Joanne. Radical transformation. This is what my keynote speaker talk is going to be like about at Victoria Smith's Four Point Spiritual Fair. Wonderful. If God is love, then it's about developing the love within to the level God is. Exactly. There is no other, there is no other path. I don't care your denomination, your code, walk, talk, creed, code of say. I love it. Because it's very difficult to put such subtle power into words that it requires one to experience it, to fully get it, yeah? Right, right. And all it takes is one step at a time. Nobody's asking you to build the Eiffel Tower. You know, you take baby steps, you know? And when you take one baby step, then you'll take two baby steps. And then all those steps just keep building and building and building. <laughs> until you get back to the soul of who you truly are and who you've always been you just haven't awakened to it yet it's there i had a phenomenal time with you sister thank you so much thank you give us your website and contacts once again all right it's um breath of energia healing.com spell that out please breath okay. of energia okay. all right B R E A T H of is O F. Energia is E N E R G I A. Healing H E A L I N G dot com. And the website is Breath of Energia, spelt the same way. Breath of Energia Healing at gmail dot com. And if I may add, let's let's talk about the uh, mention the Four Points Expo happening September 21st and 22nd, which is Saturday and Sunday, Memphis, Tennessee, at the Agra Center. Yes, everyone, come to town. You can stay with Joanne or myself. <laughs> I say come to town early. Come the yeah. night before. I play music all the time. Come hang out with me. Have fun. We we'll wake up. We all go to breakfast together. Move towards music, the fair. Music and is just, key. Music helps you connect to your soul as well. That gets that movement going. <laughs> yes. Thank you, dear. Blessings, blessings, blessings. Okay. I get the feeling, in fact, I want to do this with you not only once in a while, a little more often. I know you're empathic, and I know you can intuit and do intuit the movement and the dynamic of energy in the world. I understand the usage of the word, this is a bunch of shit happening in the world. Now, when we're done with the labeling of that, we take that and put that aside and we get down to the meat and potatoes about right. what's really happening. I would like to do this in a little more often base with you and see how this dynamic between you and I goes. Does that sound cool? Love it. Sounds wonderful. I'd love to. Everyone, Keith Anthony Blanchett, my guest tonight is Joanne Kissler. And we talked about raising your vibrational frequency. Not only frequency as in vibration, but your frequency. How frequent you do a certain something 
And when you begin to allow that to curve within itself, like feedback from a microphone in a PA system, this expansion begins to happen in this frequency. And then suddenly you begin to freak out. Because through the new world, <laughs> through the silence, the new world just magically appears. My name is Keith Anthony Blanchard. I want to say thank you again to Joanne Kistler. Thank Spread you. the light. Be good to yourself. Dear Lord, be good to yourself. What else do you have? You cannot write a $1,000 check and give it to someone if you don't have $1,000 in your account. Take into account your worth. Graduate. Live peacefully. It's truly the only thing you have left. It's all you've really ever had. Peace, love, and light.